everybody welcome to <coughs> oh god no don't worry it's not a bad cough um welcome to friday nights with emma hope everybody is doing okay um as usual give me a little heart or thumbs up a little wave to let me know that you're there um yeah just going to wait until everybody joins oh god got a froggy throat Sorry. <clears throat> oh, hiya, hiya. I'm just doing some hand sewing. So if I'm looking down, I am just looking at what I'm doing. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I'm just being quiet. I haven't seen. Oh, hi, say something. I can't see who's there. I can't see who's there. This was. Anyway, as usual. Um, him downstairs knows not to play video games, but if for some reason I do disappear, just hit the refresh and the video will come back up. Oh, hi Deborah. Hi Dawn. Oh, now you guys are coming up. Now I can see who's there. Um, tonight? <laughs> well, this week I kind of got distracted by something shiny, like I do. I saw something, I'm like, ooh, that a, would be a good idea. So I'm, I kind of started another new project, but anyway, so I thought I'd tell you about it. I'm just sewing. Oh, hi, Pam. I'm just going to do this seam and I can show you what I'm doing, even though it won't be completely sewn together. But tonight I thought I would talk about charm quilts because, oh, I've just lost my thread. I've got this mental list of quilt patterns that I want to do and a charm quilt has been on the list for quite a while but I saw well sorry I'm just gonna lick it out <clears throat> so I've seen a few nice charm quilts I like which are quite involved but I'm like oh I'd really like to do oh hi Joan really like to make one but I haven't actually seen a pattern that has drawn me into making one until this week. I'm like, ooh, I could totally do that pattern as a charm quilt. Hi, Karen. So first off, what is a charm quilt? Well, it's a quilt where literally each patch is a different fabric. Oh, hi, Elizabeth. <clears throat> so even though you might have all your fabric colours along a theme oh hi Helen um, each fabric is an actual different fabric hi Kathleen welcome welcome oh, I hope everybody is doing okay hope everybody's staying safe and yeah I'm just gonna um, finish this seam and I can show you what I'm doing oh the other thing I'm doing which you'll get to see more in more detail on Tuesday when I'm on with John is hand piecing which is how I first started how to learn how to do patchwork so that's what I'm doing right now I'm going to hand piece this charm quilt yeah so charm quilt each patch is different so you can oh my thread just broke you can start by cutting a patch from each of your fabric stash but then you might find that either you or if you want to stay along a fabric color theme you might not have enough fabrics in that color different fabrics in order to make each patch difference hi chloe hi welcome so what a lot of people do and i haven't seen them recently but back in the 90s when i first started you could see them because in the back of patchwork magazines they used to be like classified adverts and people would advertise to do charm square swaps so people would send you a certain number of squares in a certain size and then you would send them back the same or different fabrics so everybody sort of built up their their charm squares of different fabrics ooh, by sharing basically which is nice because then you'd have kind of a, a pen pal thing and then you'd share fabrics and you wouldn't cost you anything because you'd have the fabric so you'd just be swapping which was nice because it was a social thing 
So it would be nice to start that again, maybe a, a charm square swap group. <clears throat> oh, hi Belinda. But I'll show you. Let me just finish this scene. Which way is I going? Oh, yeah, this way. So you'll get to see all this hand sewing technique on Tuesday when I'm with John. Because I'll be doing my making a block, my first ever block that I made, which is special to me. Oh, hi, Alison. Oh, you're not late. I'm just waffling on. I haven't shown anybody anything interesting yet. I'm just waffling, waffling about charm quilts. So I'm just finishing up this seam. I only started this tonight. So I've got most of it sewn, except the last two big seams. And if I get this one done, you'll have a better idea, even though the other side isn't completely sewn of what I'm doing. There we go. Actually, I might just put my my needle in and show you because it's boring just watching me oh yeah so hi there Alison so <clears throat> this is what I'm doing it is just a just a star and one side is just pinned so bear with me but that's what I've been working on so it's gonna be a charm quilt which means like every patch is a different fabric now I haven't gone on a theme of a particular colorway because I just wanted it to be scrappy because right well scrappy quilts tend to be the type of quilt that I gravitate back to even though the ones where you've got uniform fabrics and everything's in order I do love those there is beauty in those for the ones that I tend to make and I tend to keep I tend to always go scrappy oh hi hi Ellen oh my husband sent you off to watch Emma <laughs> yeah Hi Jeanette, oh you're self-isolating, now according to government so I hope to get some sewing, good good good, yes everybody stay safe, hi Jackie, oh how do we find you on Tuesday, so Tuesday morning I'll be with John um, and it will be on the Crafters Companion website and it will be on Facebook on John's Sewing World, so you'll be able, if you're subscribed to John's Sewing World you should automatically get an update of when that will be on, but it will be on um tuesday morning and but if you miss it you will be able to catch up so yeah oh hi lorraine All right so this isn't what i'm going charm quilts are not what i'm going to be doing but i will be showing how to do hand piecing this is what i'm doing at the moment but this is a charm my first charm square for my charm quilt so each fabric is a different fabric so each one is completely different and so like I said, for a charm quilt, each square, so you have to have a lot of different fabrics. I had, I mean this one has, what, eight and nine, so what, 17? <laughs> How could I could do the math quick? 17 different fabrics in this just one block. And then what I'll do for the alternate blocks is reverse the colorway. So the color will be in the background and then the, the star will be all different shades of pale basically so that yeah it's reversed so that's the pattern that i saw on instagram this week from somebody else and that one was all made in tilda uh fabrics which was still kind of the scrappy look but they weren't necessarily a charm scrappy where it, each fabric is completely different so yeah oh hi pam i did a baby quilt using oh yes I, I'm, yeah, the other thing I tend to go back towards is Sawtooth Star. My first quilt was made of Sawtooth Stars. Was it, well, that was a baby quilt too. Yeah, for Kaylee. So yeah, I, I'd like it. I'd like stars. I, yeah, stars and hand piecing. Oh, hi, Ellen. You can watch John live on YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is great if you've got to watch it on Smart TV. Yeah. I don't know if mine is, I inherited my television from mum, so it might be a smart TV, but I don't know. My mum is way more technologically advanced than I am. She teaches me all the tricks. So, yeah. Ooh, and then I lost my thread. So yeah, so charm quilts. I think it'd be really fun. I might have to start something where you swap fabrics so that you get a, you get lots of different patches from all over the place. Can you imagine if you had it from all over the world? 
all the different fabrics that you'd be able to get. And then the fun thing is, so I've got one quilt that I did. It was all flying geese and it consisted of all the fabrics I had in my stash at the time. So it was all different colours just like this. But there are still some fabrics in there that I know were given to me. Like, oh yeah, that fabric came from so-and-so. Oh, and that fabric was from such and such. So it's nice to go back and see, you know, where you got all the fabrics from, especially if you, well, either if you did buy them, because I can still do that. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember buying that fabric from such and such shop or such and such person gave me that fabric. And, um, oh, Pam, but was it machine sewn? Um... Which one? The Flying Geese or the Sawtooth Star? Let me know. If, it, if you're talking about the Sawtooth Star quilt that I did, the first one, that was hand-pieced because I didn't have a sewing machine then. The Flying Geese one I did do on the machine. But I did cut literally all of the fabric from my stash, which there was a point <laughs> when all of my fabric did fit into one small container so I uh, yeah I could do that but yeah that's not the case anymore not the case anymore <clears throat> oh Pam that sounds good about swapping fabric yeah yeah and I don't know why you don't really see it anymore but it, yeah it was again you'd say a certain size square so not taking the mickey and saying I want a 12 inch square or anything so maybe like a, a five inch or a six inch square and yeah saying that's what size you need and then swapping them and there was a i have had a time when i think this must have charm quilts must have been fashionable in the 90s because i do remember going to a quilt show and when you when you paid your entrance fee they automatically gave you a, a pack of charms uh to squares basically and i have gotten them from I think it's Polina Patchwork and I've ordered fabric from them in the past. I think they've put in a um, pack of charm squares. But yeah, so I'll have to, have to dig them out. But yeah, I think that would be fun to do a swapsy. Ooh, oh, look at the message from me above and I said I did a machine, not a hand set. Oh, oh, sorry, Pam. It's going. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a baby quilt. Oh, but it was machine said. Oh, okay. I understand you now. I got there eventually. Took me a while, but I got there. I got there. Yeah, sorry, I'm just still sewing. <clears throat> so yeah. Um, what else was I gonna say? Oh, yes. So I will be at the shop if anybody's local this weekend and the following weekend still. I'm guessing it will probably be fairly quiet. So not this weekend, but next weekend, I probably will be um, starting to pack up because it will just be online after that. But if anybody's in the area, I will still be open the next couple of weekends. That's the plan anyway, so far. Um, let's see any more comments. Ooh. Oh, hi Shirley. <laughs> oh, them were the days. Small amounts of fabric. Now look at us all now. <laughs> I know, I know. Yep. There's a, there's a word that the, the miniaturists, so the, the people who paint miniatures <clears throat> use, which I think it, it can go across all hobbies, and it's stable, which stands for stash accumulated beyond life expectancy. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think I, think I may have reached that, but I, I don't know. We'll see. Depends how quickly I can get through all these projects. So... But yeah, there will have to be, there will be some de-stashing having to be happening. And if that is in a, the form of swapping charm squares, then yay, I'm all for it. So yeah. I have to admit, I do like going back to hand sewing. I've been doing it a lot more lately. Oh, hi Helen. Yeah, free charm squares with Polina when you spend over £25. Oh, okay. They are, but no mail order via website. Oh, but mail order via website. Yes. Oh, okay, so 
if you mail order over 25 pounds then you get this charm squares is that right anyway yeah <clears throat> so yes the hand piecing what i like about it is you can take it anywhere so i have well i've been known i have taken it with me when i've had to go travel for work and done it on the plane at the airport while i'm waiting because it's just so portable actually today i had to go to a training i didn't take my sewing with me but i did take some crochet because i have been working on a, on a doll for john for his doll stash or well, not his doll stash but you know his dolls for for the lady and i did get a couple of askance glances because it was mostly men actually me and my colleague were the only women at the training but that's all right i don't mind do my crochet anywhere got five minutes on my sewing yeah so oh hi jackie oh i've just sent a sewing machine a set of fabric threads haberdashery and patterns to my daughter so that she and my granddaughter can teach themselves to sew oh yay oh that'll be really good that'll be really good nice yeah lots of youtube lots of youtube to do to learn all sorts of things well, that'd be fun you'll have to send me pictures of what they make right so that seam is done that top seam is done i've got to do this bottom one yet so yeah you can take it anywhere and oh talking of charm squares <clears throat> i mean literally <clears throat> i don't know why i've got a dry throat all of a sudden it's been fine all day i think it's been in the sewing room i think it's a bit dry in here Sorry, don't do as I do, do as I say. My husband tells me off for um, biting my thread off. Sorry, it's a bad habit, but it works. Um, yes, hand piecing. I find that there's a lot less waste. So because of the way that you mark out your shapes, um, you can get a lot more out of your fabric than with machine piecing. So that's why it's nice. Oh, hi Jeanette. Oh, I used to take my crochet on the bus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've taken knitting when I haven't had to use a pattern or anything. Just knitting backwards and forwards normally. <clears throat> to the cinema before so I didn't have to look at it I could just feel what I was doing and I remember it was the first time I did it and my daughter was with me and she was so embarrassed she's like oh, can't believe you take your knit into the cinema mom I'm like what's wrong with that I wasn't bothering anybody but yeah I do remember her being mortified that her mum took knitting to the cinema anyway those were the days yeah so I'm just doing the other side now I will show you if you ch ch you know I mean I, it's hard to see exactly the technique because my lighting's not good the camera's not the best so I promise I will show all of this the marking out the cutting the making of the templates um, all on Tuesday with John sorry I've got a drink I've got a dry throat I think it's from drying here and talking Don't worry, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, hi Jackie, should have said. Oh, yes. While you're in lockdown, they're off school. <clears throat> yeah, my colleague Dina, her children, well, her oldest one, they stopped school, I think, on Tuesday afternoon. And then her youngest was off from today. What's gone mad, I tell you? It's gone mad. I think we just need to go back and turn 2020 off and on again and see if it resets itself because this is craziness oh hi helen oh epp good to do whilst waiting for appointments in front of the tv uh on month 15 and alice power oh nice 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 oh just water <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's water uh-huh sure yeah yeah we'll go with that <laughs> i'm already ahead of you helen is what i'm saying um, EPP, yes. So you will see 
Um, I'm hand sewing this, but there are no papers involved whatsoever. Um, so it's not the same technique as EPP. I have to admit, because I learned this way first, I've never actually tried EPP because it looked like it was more faff than doing it this way, if I put it that way. So I've always just stuck to this method of hand piecing. But yes, I do love how portable it is. Take it anywhere. You basically mark out your shapes beforehand. <laughs> yeah, go on. Water with added grapes. <laughs> That's the one. That's the kind I got. <clears throat> And yeah, supportable, efficient. And I like how I do this in front of the telly a lot. Actually, that's what I was doing earlier. I was watching Rick Stein in France while I was sewing, getting ready for tonight. And it's just nice and easy. Because I, yeah, that's why I took my crochet with me today because I don't like to just sit and not be doing something with my hands. The other thing I really like about this, so when I go to quilt groups, especially when you're working on your own project rather than being like in a workshop or anything, it's, I think it's nice just to be able to sit opposite somebody, well, back when we could do that, and just have some hand piecing and not have a big machine in front of you, in between you and the person in front of you, so that you can actually chat and be more sociable. Of course, now we do that, we just need to be like two metres away. But yeah. Oh, Pam, that's called American. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's the one. American hand piecing. Yep. Now, whether it actually is a... Well, I call it American. I mean, well, go back, go back. <clears throat> so originally, I just called it hand piecing because that's what they call it in America. It's a bit like Chinese food, right? In China, they just call it food. It wasn't until I came here um, that I, I learned that pretty much everybody that I met who hand sews patchwork does it the English paper piecing way. I haven't met anybody else who does it this way in England. So that's why I always call it the American hand piecing because that's where I mostly have come across it. And even they call EPP EPP, English paper piecing. So they differentiate it as well. So yeah. Oh, hi, Alison. <laughs> yeah, you got the red grapes? I got the white grapes tonight. Yeah. Managed to get my order in with Naked Wines just in time before they stopped taking orders, which was lucky. So that should be coming in the next couple of days. I mean... You gotta stock up on the essentials, right? I mean, if I gotta stay home two weeks with hubby, gotta have some way of surviving it. Oh, Sarah, yes. <laughs> this is perfect social distancing. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, what I might do... Oh, that's the other thing I was going to tell you guys. Oh, hi, Amanda. Um, so not So this weekend and next weekend are the last two weekends of the shop. So... What I was thinking, because I'm going to have more Saturdays. Oh, hi, another Naked Wine fan. Thankfully, well stocked. Yes, I love Naked Wines. I never really was, yeah, I'm going to waffle on now. Never was into really drinking wine before I met Naked Wines. My brother introduced me and he's very much of the, well, if you don't like it, don't pay for it. And he, and more. So I'm like, okay. And so I did do that. And by doing that so if anybody doesn't know naked wines is an online wine company where if you want to you can join up to be an angel and you pay 20 pounds a month but it just goes into your account that's money that you can always withdraw if you want it doesn't go away but that's what uh, builds up over time you can buy your wine with so usually what i do is place an order twice a year um let my money build up and then usually in summer and then usually just before christmas i usually have a big order um but if you ever have a wine and for some reason you don't like it you just either it doesn't taste right or you just don't find it tastes very nice you just call them up and you say hey 
I didn't like that wine. Can I please have my money back? And they give you back the credit of the cost of that wine. So it's like you can try wines with no risk. So I actually found some wines that I do like. And now I know what I like. Yeah, which probably isn't such a good thing that now I know what, what wines I like. I, um, yeah, I tend to drink a little bit more. But, yeah, still only like a glass a night, which I don't think is going to worry anybody. But anyway, so yeah, so that's Naked Wines. Oh, and they deliver it to your door. Even more perfect. And you get fairly decent wine. It's very good wine for not, I mean, yeah, it depends what you get. But you can get some fairly decent wines in there. Um, oh, Malbec. I like Malbec. Mine, see, my red, I tend to like a Rioja. Something smooth. And I never liked white, never liked white, until I discovered one naked wine. There's one um, vineyard that does a really nice Sauvignon Blanc. And that's pretty much what my next order is coming, is a full case of just Sauvignon Blanc from that one place. So, yeah. So it's nice, you get to figure out what you do and don't like, and yeah. Um, what's oh yeah, 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 that's what I was talking about. Sorry, I went off track. <clears throat> so now the shop is closing, that means I'm going to have more free weekends. So what I'm going to do is do a proper sew along on a Saturday with a project. Now I'm not sure what project yet. Um, but it could be either a particular technique or a cushion or a pattern. But I will have like a sew along, a proper sew along, where I'll show you, I'll demonstrate properly, just like we used to do on Sewing Quarter, on how to make a particular thing. And I thought that's perfect, well, kind of perfect timing with everybody not being able to come to workshops. That it'd be kind of like a workshop just online, on Facebook. So for free, so everybody can join and sew along together. So watch out for that. That won't start till sometime in April, probably not the first weekend because I've kind of promised myself because the last day off I had was Boxing Day. So the first weekend in April, I'm actually going to have a day off. And I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but yeah, it's not going to be work. So maybe the second weekend in April, I will plan and I'll let you guys know what it is that I'll be doing. But I'll do a proper sew along somewhere where you can see what I'm doing, not in my dark sewing room on a Friday night. Uh, so you can actually see me cutting out and do a proper demonstration. So yeah, that's coming up. Oh, hi, Brenda. Oh, and you help the wine growers from Naked Wine. Yes, that's the other thing about Naked I forgot to say. Um, naked wines. I'm sorry. This is good. Turning into an advert for naked wines now. Um, if you become an angel, um, naked wines actually invests in the wine makers as well. So you're helping um, the wine growers, the vineyard people, the whatever you call them. Yeah. And you get to find out who they are, and they're from all over. You get to see their story and actually, you know, interact with them, which is really nice. So you know where your wine's coming from. Yeah, my brother. Uh, went on holiday in South Africa three, three years ago? I don't remember. But yeah, he actually stopped at one of the vineyards that he gets wine from, from Naked Wines, while he was there. So yeah, we got to see him. But yeah. Oh, hi Barbara. Wonderful idea. Um, which one? <laughs> I've been rambling. The, the sew along? Okay. If that's, if that's the case, then yeah. yeah. Um, also, because I haven't planned what I'm going to be doing yet, if you guys have any particular things you want me to cover, throw them at me, send them to me, message me, and um, yeah, I'll see what I can work out. So yeah. Oh, second, oh, second weekend in April is Easter. Uh, okay. But it will be the Saturday, not the Sunday. So it won't be Easter Sunday, I promise. It will be on a Saturday. That works out. Oh, love a sew along, but it would need to be a weekend for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be a Saturday, I promise. I'll do a Saturday. And then it will be on Facebook and 
on YouTube at some point as well so you can always uh, catch up later if you can't do it actually with me yeah oh hi Brenda uh Saturday online classes sound fantastic yeah so I'll, I'll start doing that oh Saturday workshop yeah yeah okay Barbara okay just if you have any particular things you want me to cover let me know um I've been working on a few things I've been working on a few projects finishing up oh that's what I'm doing out today I could do something along the lines of um, the bicycle quilt oh how about the star oh you mean like um the folded star or something different because if it's a folded star I'd have to double check sorry I've lost my thread um double check with Jane Alcock who designed that that she's happy for me to do that because I know last time we talked if we did a workshop then it was just to have a donation some sort of donation to go to um the autism charity to cover that oh hi Sarah I know you offer your quilting by machine but would you be good but would be good to get some tips on how to layer up without it all sort of ruffling up ah oh okay I can do that because I I mean when I hand quilt I have to layer it up well I cheat <laughs> when I hand quilt I'll be honest um Oh, hang on. Be good as can't, yeah. Can't, oh, I can't see we will rock you. What was a present from my husband? Yeah, world's gone mad. Oh, the folded star. Okay, for the folded star, I'll have to check with, like I said, with Jane. She's happy for me to do that because that was her pattern. And I don't want to show her pattern. Although, I mean, it's the, the demonstrations on YouTube already from Sewing Quarter. So I wouldn't be able to tell you necessarily the dimensions of the rectangles needed, but I can definitely show you the technique because that's already public domain, basically. Oh, sorry, I'm just cutting, trimming this off. Um, oh, John did a folded star this week. Yes, I saw that. Now that technique, that technique I can do for sure. Um, that's a slightly different technique to the one that Jane did. I've done both. I'm trying to see. I do have, I can get to it. If you'll bear with me for a sec, I'm gonna disappear for two minutes and I'll show you the one that I did, <coughs> which is also very cool. I'll be right back. Momentito, por favor. over a few things had to climb over my machine to get this off the wall so this was the one I did so uh, this was a challenge to do one one Christmas with my our quilting group so this is the folded star this is the same one that John did now this one you sew down the middle so it's not the same as the one that Jane does it's not as bulky as the one that Jane does. So the one that Jane does, I actually have one that's half done. <clears throat> this is my half done one, you can see. So it's loose, you, it's loose when you sew it on, but then you fold them you fold them into each other and those layers become quite quite thick and bulky whereas this one is quite flat and you don't have quite so many let's see one two three I've only got four colors there whereas this one has about eight one two three four five yeah eight it's about the same sort of size star but this one's bigger 
Ooh. Love your sewing room, Emma. It looks as adventurous as mine. Yeah, it is. This is the other thing that's going to happen when I start to get my weekends back is this room is going to be sorted. Things are going to go into storage, which I don't know if that's a good or bad thing because at the moment I'm seeing things. I'm like, oh, I can finish that, which is how I saw this last weekend. This was what I was finishing up. So now I just have to sew around all the the uh, feathers but as I see it I'm like oh I could do that but if I put it in storage then I won't be able to see it anymore but anyway oh another jumble next to the machine so is mine yeah yeah I have a space to work in the machine the big machine is much more clear but yeah um started doing different sizes <clears throat> could do you could do more coming out but then it gets tricky so yeah um the other thing i was thinking about, actually this came i thought about this in the middle of the night last night but with a different fabric so this uh that i did is just this was a pattern on a fabric so what i did is i've just i put bondo web on the back of the fabric and then I cut out the shapes. So the pattern, the pattern wasn't like this. The pattern was the pomegranates and the leaves or different things. So what I did was I put Bond web on the back and then I cut out around the shapes. So kind of like decoupage. And then I layered them up to make this design and then quilted around it. So because it's a wall hanging, I haven't actually sewn any of these pieces on at all. They're literally just Bond webbed on. And then I've just echo quilted around it. But that, something like that, is something that I could show you. Um, because I have the perfect fabric for it at the shop. It's not green, it's um, a blue and white Jacobean type one, which I think would be perfect. Oh, but I also have some Dutch heritage that has some really nice patterns on it that you could do a similar thing. Oh, uh, let's see, what was I saying? About a quilt. But each block is a different technique. Ooh. That's a good idea. So uh, the beginner's quilt that I do is kind of similar. <clears throat> so it has your applique, it has curves, it has um, from basic to harder to putting it all together. I have to think about that. Oh, love it. Please cover this on a Saturday. Oh, you mean do that? Okay. Okay. We'll do that. I'm down. So I have to um, think up a schedule of things to do. Oh, I'm delighted your room behind you looks like all of us. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Very much so. And this is a double bedroom, which is a scary thing. Uh, so many UFOs I look at. Yeah. Oh, which is the other thing. The bicycle. Where did I put it? Oh, it's in a bag. I found it. No. So my, the bicycle quilt is a nice one to do as a sew along. It would have to be in stages because there's the background piecing as well as the front. Now the background piecing is a different technique to what you do actually do the applique on the front, but I could do that in a two-parter, which might be nice. Uh, oh, that's lovely on the hoop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just a fun way of doing something and displaying it so if you don't want to have like a ton of cushions because that's what we end up doing is we have a small project and we turn it into a cushion or a wall hanging although I think my peacock is going to be a wall hanging for in here because at the moment I've only got one quilt on the on the wall and it's pretty bare so I think my peacock is going to be a wall hanging but yeah I love these for wouldn't it be lovely to put another James folded star in one of these and then what I the idea with this was this was supposed to be kind of Christmassy and then I could turn it over so this is what I display most of the time and then when it's Christmas I flip it over so it's Christmas but yeah oh love the pomegranate yeah I'll show you this fabric I loved this fabric I don't know well I don't remember where I got it from but 
I bought it because I was making a quilt that was all different shades of green and I think it was all just different shades of green so dark green and pale green uh, it was a log cabin that has a star in each intersection corner so all the stars were yellow and then I had the greens and I think there was red there was red in the center so the log cabin still had a red center yeah that quilt ended up with um, Travis Travis has that one now um, all of your ideas have been up skills yeah yeah because there are some so a lot of the applique where the skills are very transferable so like the peacock for instance the peacock the technique for making the peacock is exactly the same as doing um, some of Helen Newton's patterns where you have applique then you just serve the top so it's just raw edge applique but I can show some needle turn applique at some point as well at least the cheats way <clears throat> um, I've on a different quilt block okay give me an idea for a bedridden mum thank you Emma oh good 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 uh, I'd love you to show us some of your work. Oh, okay, I will. I'll have to. Um, I've got so many. When I when we get a bigger space and I can show you, I will show you some of the things. Actually, one of the a lot of my quilts live in the airing cupboard. One of them I dug out this week was a sheep quilt, which I hadn't. Well, I made ages ago, hand quilted from a pattern that I had on my mental list from when I started quilting. And uh, finally got around to doing it. But yeah, I'll have to post a picture of that actually. So you can see that. Oh, hi Jackie. Because our quilt group has to close for the duration, I started a group. Oh, good. It's for your blog. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I wanted to go back to whoever had the question about layering up. <clears throat> okay. So what I do is... You lay out your, well, first off, you have to press it. Lay out, your, press your backing as best you can. And then you lay it out. I have always layered out up on the floor. I know a lot of people can't do that. And now that places are closing, it's harder because a lot of our quilt groups, you put all the tables together and then they would do it on top of the table, which I don't always like that way either. But then sometimes you can't get a table even set a table is big enough to layer your quilt on. So I've always layered up on the floor, pushed all the furniture back, hoovered it up really well, put my backing down. <clears throat> so you put your backing down, um, wrong side up, um, right side down. And then this masking tape or duct tape or kidnap tape as Dina calls it, um, you have to tape down the edges of your backing and you stretch it out ever so slightly so that your backing fabric is um, sort of taped down onto the floor so that it's nice and smooth, there's no wrinkles, nothing like that. Now, okay, the way I used to do it, to do that, put your um, wadding down on it, smooth it all out, put your top on top of that, smooth it all out, and you can either use a safety pin method so then you pin 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 literally about what is it that that far away so maybe about three inches away from each other or you can do a running stitch big running stitches with a big needle um, a curved upholstery needle helps or if you just use a big needle what i used to do is to have a spoon in one hand needle in the other and then do a two-handed jobby where I would push the needle down and up and scoop it up with the, the uh, spoon so it helps to bring it all back up through the layers and go along like that. It's a big running stitch all the way from one end to the other and then uh, that way as well. Probably about six inches apart between rows of stitching. <clears throat> now that is a pain. To do that is a pain. Um, I'd say it's more necessary to do that if you've got um, polyester wadding. Now, whenever I did that, I always hand quilted. So 
anyway, while in the process of hand quilting, you hand quilt from the middle and you work your way out. I always smoothed it out as I went along. So you're kind of readjusting as you go along anyway. If you're machine quilting, you can't always do that. Uh, so what works well, what I found works well if I'm machine quilting on my domestic machine and I have a fairly big quilt is I use the 505 spray basting. Now, that does keep all your layers together really well, especially to go under the machine. Um, what I'll say is I haven't, I haven't technically washed any of those quilts yet, but I do find that it makes it a little bit stiffer. So the, 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 the quilt isn't as soft and drapey if I use 505 spray than it would be. Now, once you, if you wash it, that might change. I'm just saying. Um, how I cheat, and this is for hand quilting, is I use cotton, either 100% cotton or cotton blend um, wadding. And I find when I lay my backing out, lay my wadding out and then my top on top and smooth it all out when I use cotton wadding I find that it naturally sticks all those layers together not like glue but it's a little bit like um, not quite velcro but it, it does tend to keep things in place so I have to admit when I hand quilt I have stopped basting of any sorts because I just use the cotton wadding and I find that it just keeps all my layers together anyway and I just readjust a little bit so it keeps everything smooth. So that's my cheats way is just to use cotton wadding and to not baste because it keeps it all together. So that's, my, that's me waffling. Let me answer your questions now. Um, oh hi Elizabeth. Uh, excuse me. Oh we had that one. Sorry. Bedroom mum and running out of things to make for her. Yes. Uh, we'll look, yes, show you some work. Yes, had that one. Because I, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Jackie. Got that bit. Oh, reverse applique, please. Oh, okay. Okay. You have to remind me. As we go along, remind me. Um, let's see, what have I done? Oh, yes, the Hawaiian quilt in the middle was reverse applique. Yeah. Oh, hi, Ellen. I've never hand quilted, so I'd love to learn from my Liberty quilt as it's hand done. Oh, yes, good idea. Okay, I can show you a little bit of hand quilting. I'd say the, the secret to hand quilting is don't start on your quilt. Um, I would, so when I do the hand quilting class, when I've done it at the shop, what I've done is just a square or two squares of muslin, rather, or just plain fabric. Take a piece two pieces about yay big so about 16 inches square wadding in between the two and draw out or stencil out a design that you want on the top um, there's lots of hand quilting stencils available oh these are mine this is one of them so this is a hand quilting stencil so i would lay this on top of my quilt and with a water soluble pencil. So don't use friction pen. I mean, you can, but I'm, I'm just to say as a general rule, I wouldn't use it on the, on the front of my quilt. Let's see if the pencil I've here. Don't have any. But you can get water soluble pencils. Clover do one in a silver. So if you've got a light fabric, um, it comes out sort of grey silver and you can just draw through all the holes in the stencils and then you just follow the lines to quilt along. So I would practice that first before going to your quilt. Um, and the technique of hand quilting, it's a personal thing. I always use a thimble. Where's my thimble? Always use a thimble. And when I use a thimble, well, these are the ones that I like anyway because they're quite thin and importantly they have a ridge around the top now when I sew I always push my needle sorry push my needle from the end especially when I'm hand quilting so it catches in the in the end in the ridge 
if you've got one that's smooth along the top which i probably do have one around here yes this one this one's smooth worthless absolutely worthless uh, the holes are so shallow you can't even get the, the, the needle in it so I think this came out of like a kit not a very good thimble um, this is a different one but also good because it has the ridge on the top and it has nice deep ridges along the side it's way too small for me so I have no idea where this one came from it only fits on my little finger but yeah so practice 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 I'll show I will show you one day remind me um but yeah practice 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 oh how's my temperature quilt are you up to date no it uh, might be a sunday job we'll see how i get through my jobs at the shop tomorrow um but yeah usually it has been when it's been quiet on a sunday at the shop i've been sitting and catching up on my temperature quilt but i will i'll catch up i'll get it done how's everybody else doing if you're doing the temperature quilt how are you doing it's going to be an interesting it's going to be interesting year to record i think so i'm already thinking of um the label that i'm going to put on the back i'm wondering what i'm going to record to say what happened this year because it's such a unusual year so we'll see we'll see at the end oh hi sil oh hi dawn i spray base wash well oh, okay so you got it from dawn <clears throat> if you use the 505 spray wash it and it, it it washes well and gets out so i'm getting a bit dry i have to have a bit of grape juice oh hi helen have you sprayed them washed it and it's about it soft oh, okay so that's what i need to do then i need to get that quilt there's one in particular that i need to put through the wash and see how it how it does oh plenty of time i've got block two blocks left to stitch and about 30 to stitch together oh, okay Another hand quilting. Okay, just remind me because um, we can do that. It's just, Dawn can tell you, it is just a practice. So getting the rhythm. So I always hand quilt two handed. It doesn't sound right, but so one hand underneath, one hand on top, and I actually use my fingers underneath to feel the needle and to help push it through. So it's, it's kind of a two handed job when I. Um, hand quilt which i haven't done for a little while actually hand piecing haven't hand quilted although i do have one that needs to be hand quilted so yeah what time is it anyway <gasps> holy cow it's almost nine o'clock you guys must be really tired of hearing me waffle on anyway so i'll let you guys go um that's charm quilts so we may have to start some sort of group going where we, um, oh, how did I do that? I managed to get it all hand sewn. I didn't even notice. Well, okay, so that's that's it. It's, it's an entirety. Um, I'll try, actually, I think I'll go down and I'll start um, cutting some bits out for the next one, which is gonna be opposite. So color around the edge and pale colors for the star. So yeah, you can see that next week. And yeah, so maybe we can get a group started for the like a swap swap shop thing and we'll see how it goes. Oh, do I use a hoop? Yeah. It, and it's one of those, again, personal preference, but I've always quilted with a hoop and I find it easier. But then there's other people who have only ever quilted without a hoop and they really can't get on with it. So I think it's one of those you have to try it and see which way works best for you. But yeah so all right well i will let you guys all go uh i will see you next friday if i don't see you before then on tuesday with john and yeah everybody take care stay safe and remember to send me in those ideas message me those ideas on uh, what you want to see on a saturday workshop and i'll prepare something up for the second saturday in april so bye guys have a good evening and i'll see you later Bye.